you look at the Ten Commandments, juxtaposed to our Constitution and our laws, so many of them are based upon these laws that were given to us uh, thousands of years ago in, uh, in the Sinai. And so, again, the, the, both my understanding of my faith and the Judeo-Christian values that were part of our founding are important within that context. I think we should be, as a nation, always very protective of the freedoms and liberties we have uh, to, um, that people have to believe whatever they want or nothing at all. Right. People have a right in America sure. to believe absolutely nothing at all. 100%. And so when you, you are in this country and you will find not just Judaism, but virtually every style and tradition Judaism in the world is represented in this country. Not just Christianity, but virtually every version of Christianity in the world. Not just Islam but almost virtually every strain of Islam in the world, not to mention a series of other uh, faiths that are not as large in this country, but nonetheless significant, Hinduism, Buddhism, and the like. Why? Because we have religious liberty. Because in America, we respect the right of everyone under our Constitution, not just to live, uh, not just to believe whatever they want, but to live it. So I think we find solidarity in that. I think we find solidarity as well in some of the principles. Of, uh, you look at the American people. Why are the American people the most charitable people in the world? By far. The American people, not the government, just the people directly, contribute more to charitable causes than most governments in the world. Why? Is it because the government compels us to do so? No. It's because our faith tradition, Judeo and Christian, teach us that we have an obligation to care for the less fortunate. And uh, both faith traditions strongly influence that. And so today, you see across this country that a large number of those entities that are out there, independent of government, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, housing the homeless, and tending to the less fortunate, are motivated to do so by their faith. And I think that's something we find solidarity in as well. Okay. With, with a large segment of the American public, you know, sort of shifting a little bit away from religion, away from faith, what would you say is, some, is a way that we could instill you know, the Judeo-Christian values, the, the sense of faith, uh, back into our society. Well, it's probably not government. It's pro it most certainly is. Obviously, government needs to protect the freedom to be able to do so and shouldn't infringe upon the freedom to do so, but it won't be government. I can't pass a law to make people more moral or more faithful. I think the responsibility lies in the most important organization in any society, the family, the home. And we shouldn't have any laws that weaken families or that tries to replace the family. And families should have the rights and, and the opportunity to, to have more influence over their children's direction. It's one of the reasons why I support school choice. For me, it is immoral that the only people in this country that cannot choose where their children go to school are poor people. And so if you're wealthy, you can send your kids to a school in which their faith is reinforced. But if you're poor, you gotta send them to the government school where the mere mention of God could get you kicked out of the classroom. You know, that, that, that to me is absurd. And so just because you're not wealthy does not mean you should not have the opportunity to send your kids to the school that you choose even if that's a school in which your faith is a key part of that education. So that's an example of it. Um, and, and, I, and I would also say that we need to make sure that all of our safety net programs in this country are not anti-marriage and not anti-family formation. Again, we can't force people to get married, or, or you know, but we shouldn't have a tax code that punishes marriage, and we do. And we shouldn't have safety net programs like Medicaid that basically encourage people not to get married because if you do, you lose your benefits. So those are things we could look at on the public side. But ultimately, the responsibility of instilling those values is on us as fathers and mothers and parents and members of the community, not, not senators and not governors, not presidents, not the government. What, do, do you foresee any laws coming up that would infringe on, uh, on the family, on, on people's rights? Well, we have existing laws now. I don't know if they infringe, but they most certainly are an impediment. I know this is not just anecdotal now. You see the, re the records. There are a large number of children being born to parents who are basically living together but won't get married because if they do, their combined income knocks them off of Medicaid mm -hmm. or knocks them off of some other social safety net program. We should eliminate that incentive. We have a tax code in which an individual, uh, where, where people are better off not married because if they file married jointly, their tax obligation goes up. I think we also have to re-examine the way we function in our safety net programs. I think that too many of our safety net programs that help the less fortunate are one size fits all driven by the federal government. We should be returning more of those funds to the state level where they can have the creativity and innovation to partner with the local community, including faith-based organizations, to provide assistance to people in need, whether it's housing, food, job training, or the like.